Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Friday the 20th of November 2015 and we are covering today's announcement concerning the slowdown in China's economy. China's economy grew 6.9% in the third quarter of 2015, the weakest rate since the global financial crisis. The year-on-year -year growth rate is also below the government's 7% target. Though slightly above expectations, as most analysts were expecting growth figures of 6.8%, the data is expected to raise pressure on policymakers to increase monetary policy to stem the slowdown. China's economy has been hit by extreme stock market volatility over the summer and weak economic data causing concern on markets around the world. Disappointing data has been emanating from China for a number of weeks. Earlier this month, manufacturing data suggested the sector continued to contract for September. For example, profits at China's state firms fell 9.8% in the first 10 months of this year, the Ministry of Finance has said, with commodities linked to companies bearing the brunt of the pain. Combined profits of state-owned enterprises totaled 1.88 trillion yuan or 294.5 billion US dollars in the period the Ministry said in a statement published on its website. It added, the downward pressure on economic operations remains relatively big. Imports saw a sharp fall for the past month while inflation eased by more than expected, adding to fears of a rapid slowdown in the world's second largest economy. This slowdown comes despite repeated interest rate cuts and other stimulus measures introduced by Beijing. Louis Kouich of Oxford Economics told the BBC, quote, the government's measures helped to dampen the downside pressures, but the problem is that these pressures on growth are actually pretty severe. What keeps China going at the moment is consumption, but this cannot fully offset those negative pressures on growth and therefore even though we see some stimulus coming from the government and we see that having some impact it's not enough to prevent growth from sliding further. China has admittedly been attempting to shift from an export-led economy to a consumer and services-led one. Beijing set an official growth target of about 7% for the overall year. But Premier Li Kuchang said a lower growth rate was also acceptable as long as enough new jobs were created. Despite a slowdown in the industrial sector, it is envisaged that the services sector will grow rapidly. However, analysts say the steep fall in imports suggests domestic demand is not as strong as the government would have hoped. Robert Peston, BBC economics editor, stated in an article published today, quote, any Chinese growth, if real, now has a disproportionate impact on the global economy. And the corollary, of course, is that any slowdown beyond what's expected by client economies all over the world, manufacturers like Germany, com commodity producers like Brazil, engenders disproportionate pain. Peter Spence, the economics correspondent for the Telegraph newspaper, wrote on the 9th of September, a hard landing for the Chinese economy will likely lead the world into a recession in the next year. Cities global economics team has warned. Analysts at the Wall Street Bank believe that a slowdown 
concentrated in emerging markets will drag down demand and see economic activity fall well below its potential across the world. They anticipate the global economy to slide into recessionary territory during next year and remain there for most of 2017. The chance of such a global recession now stands at 55% staff estimated. So what does all of this mean for precious metals and in particular for gold and silver? Well, if the Chinese economy falters, then demand for industrial metals and commodities will decline further, and this will most certainly have a negative impact on the price of silver. From a supply point of view, this will mean initially a surplus, and then a deficit, as other metals are not mined, with 70% of silver mines supply being dependent on such mining. Its impact is, as we have said before, negative short term and positive in the very long term for silver. As far as gold is concerned, much depends on China's ability to continue to afford its current rate of gold purchases. Should this falter, then again this will prove negative for gold prices. However, if the world does enter into a recession, then quite possibly interest rates will not rise, and this could be positive for gold. Overall, we still see downward pressure on the metals, unless, of course, that elusive black swan swims by. We hope you have found this video helpful and informative, and would appreciate it if you would give it a thumb up, comment, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. Please also share this video on Twitter, and follow us at Illuminati Silver One. Disclaimer. Silver Illuminati owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.